Did a weirdo comic book shop owner in California actually threaten to murder slash beat up Ethan Van Skyver? Yeah, that actually happened. But was it a criminal act? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. And today we're talking about Mike Wellman, uh, the owner of Atomic Basement Comics in Long Beach, California, threatening to murder, kill, murder, death, kill, uh, and beat up Ethan Van Skyver. Not quite sure on the order and uh, would, that that would take place and whether or not these are criminal threats of violence. Uh, this was covered by Bounding Into Comics, and we'll kind of rely on that article for the facts of what Mike said and how Ethan responded. And we'll rely on the California Penal Code to determine whether or not it was a criminal act. And the reason I'm using the California Penal Code is because I'm assuming that because his shop is in California, that he was there when he actually made the statements on Facebook and thus he should be under California law at the time uh, for making the statements within that jurisdiction. If he was somewhere else when he made the statements, it could change the interpretation of the law. But, you know, that's not the fun stuff. Uh, if you like these short legal updates and hot takes and all of that stuff, please go ahead and like and subscribe and all the stuff that YouTube wants me to ask you to do uh, to help the channel grow and all of that. All right, let's take a look at the California Penal Code, and it's a mouthful, okay? It's a mouthful. So we've got uh, uh, Section 422 of Title 11.5, Criminal Threats. Any person who willfully threatens to commit a crime which will result in death or great bodily injury to another person with the specific intent that the statement made verbally in writing or by means of an electronic communication device is to be taken as a threat. So, real quick, let's break this down as we go. You have to threaten a crime that will result in death or uh, great bodily injury. Great bodily injury, you can think of as like a broken bone, a concussion, a head wound, something like that, a severe laceration. Not like a mere scratch or a bruise, right? You scratch you. Uh, that's not going to do something, but... Threatening to put a gun to someone's head and pull the trigger. Uh, threatening to blow their face off. Something like that. Uh, these are criminal acts which would cause great bodily injury or death. So that's the first thing we have to have. And the important part is that the intent of the statement is to be taken as a threat. You have to or well, the attorney prosecuting this would have to have evidence that that's intended to be threatening. It can't be some joke. Yeah, uh, yeah, come over here. I'm going to beat you up or whatever. It can't be said uh, mirthfully. Um, it can't be intended to not be a threat, right? And this is why hyperbole and idioms and movie quotes and stuff often, uh, that that's a defense, that this was never intended to be a threat. I was... Um, I was recreating Inugo Montoya, right? I didn't actually mean prepare to die. Uh, those types of things. I was, I was quoting something. So uh, it has to be specifically intended as a threat, and the state would have to provide evidence of the intent of the speaker. Usually that's in the statement, but we'll, we'll go ahead. Even if there is no intent of actually carrying it out, so it doesn't matter whether they intend to do the thing. It matters whether the statement is intended to be threatening. Even if they're uh, incapable of carrying it out, if the statement is intended to threaten the thing, that's the element. Not whether they intend to follow through on the statement. Okay, Which, on its face and under the circumstances in which it's made, is so unequivocal unconditional, immediate, and specific as to convey to the per person threatened a gravity of purpose and an immediate prospect of execution of the threat. Okay, this is a little bit confusing. This is a little bit confusing because it says things unequivocal, unconditional, immediate, and specific. 
And those sound very absolute, but they're not. The word so is actually at issue uh, in this case. That's the operative word of this statement. That it's so unequivocal, unconditional, immediate, and specific. There are four factors that are to be considered by the court. And it's not that they're absolutes. It's that when the court reaches a level of each one of those or any combination of those that it creates in the person threatened the a gravity of purpose and an immediate prospect of execution of the threat which doesn't mean that they're going to immediately do the act the execution of the threat okay it, which is really kind of backwards but it doesn't mean that if i say i'm going to shoot you in the face that i intend to convey that i'm going to shoot you in the face right now very very important that could be a factor but it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is going to do the thing right now. And that is not actually part of the test. It's the execution of the threat that must be immediate. They're threatening you right now. They're raising immediacy of the threat to you. The question is the state of mind of the victim as much as it is the state of the mind of the perpetrator. And that's a little bit different than some other areas of law that involve uh, states of minds of and, and communications back and forth. In this one, the threat has to be enough to raise the danger hackles of the person being threatened, and it has to actually do it. Let's let's go on, and thereby causes that person reasonably to be in sustained fear for his or her own safety or for his or her immediate family safety. And then it goes on to the punishment. But that's that's the thing. So it has to be capable of causing immediate fear. And it has to cause that immediate fear. And then that fear has to be sustained. Now, the fear has to be sustained for more than a moment. All right? That's kind of the legal standard, which is weird. Because what does that mean? Well, they don't know. They don't know. They've held as little as 15 minutes to be sustained fear. If you sat your chair cowering for 15 minutes were you in sustained fear yeah I, you were that's sustained right if that's the the question the ultimate question of the criminal threat and that may be fatal to the case of of uh whether or not this is criminal against mr van skyver is how ethan's state of mind was in reacting to the threat but let's take a look now at the bounding into comics uh, article check out the facts of the case and we'll apply the law this is how this is how law is done and just to let you know when i was explaining all of those elements i actually used the statements of the california supreme court and how they actually run the interpretation i just summarized them uh, at a very high level but there are all sorts of cases delving into each of the elements that are listed there so Atomic Basement comic shop owner Mike Wellman threatens to blow Ethan Van Skyver's effing face off your skull. All right, we're not going to go through all of the uh, drama going on here. Let's get to the actual statements. Um, this is in response to Ethan's statements to Larry Hama on Facebook. Okay, uh, that's where Mike Wellman's threats come in. And he replies, I can't wait to see you at a show, Ethan, and beat the living F out of you. Right there, we've got the potential for a threat of violence. Now, this one is not so immediate, right? See you at a show that's kind of vague. What show? There's no specificity to when this will be. It's some something off in the future. It's not specific. It's not, uh, he may have intended it as a threat, but was it specific enough for a reasonable person to be raised to the level of being threatened? I don't think so. I don't think so. And then he says, I am literally going to beat your derriere. This is a very angry man. How dare you insult legends like Larry Hama, as well as our industry itself. F you, I am a libtard with fists. Weird flex. You're going to feel them the next time we are at a convention together. I'm going to beat the living F out of you in front of everybody. Now, again, not super specific. We have no idea 
when these guys will be together next. But still, the threats of violence are very, very specific, right? I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat the living F out of you uh, with my fists is, is what's stated in here. And the way that these threats would work would be under a totality of the circumstances. So once we localize the statements to some specific thing, then it could become a threat. Right now, I think we're still not there. The next one, you're such a little cowardly B word, Ethan Van Shiver. Let's fight. Let me feed you a fist sandwich, you little, you little B word. Now, this isn't actually a threat of a crime. As weird as that sounds, um, feeding someone a fist sandwich wouldn't be a criminal act necessarily. And it may not cause Ethan great bodily harm or injury. As stupid as it sounds, because we know the intent of what he's saying, right? We know what he's saying, but it's an idiom and it's not a specific threat of a crime. Assaulting someone is a threat of a crime. Eating someone a sandwich made of fists? I don't know, not really. I know that sounds dumb, but it, but it kind of, it is dumb. That's how it goes. Uh, so Ethan says he might make a video about this dude. And then here is where, here is where Wellman treads into trouble. Give me your home address and give the police an actual reason to be concerned because I will come to your house and blow your effing face off your skull. That is a fact. Now we've got a threat. Now it's specific. I will come to your house. Now someone reasonably could be in fear of this happening. Ethan doesn't know where this guy is necessarily. Uh, he says Mike Wellman of Atomic Comics in California is sending me death threats. He doesn't know if Mike Wellman's in California. Mike Wellman could be down the block from Ethan. He could be the next town over. He could be in New York or Maryland. He could be somewhere in the general vicinity of Ethan Van Skyver and, and, you know, an hour or two away. How reasonable is the threat now? He said, give me your home address. Give the police an actual reason to be concerned because I will come to your house and blow your face off your skull. If Mike were to, say, procure the address of Ethan from someone else, which may be reasonable because Ethan, I don't know if Ethan's been doxxed or anything, but it's possible. Suddenly this threat hits home. All right. Now, uh, Ethan read it on a live stream. Uh, Mike says, I'm coming to beat your butt, son. Why not make it a feature at an upcoming comic convention? Could be fun. I'm going to beat your butt either way, but let's let people have an opportunity to enjoy me beating your butt in public. Like, I gotta censor this for the YouTubes, but um, this is where, again, I'm going to beat you. Either way, I'm gonna do it. This is gonna happen. Kind of a little bit weaker. The, the real threat, in my opinion, is this one. This one could absolutely be taken as a threat. What's fatal to the case, fatal to the case of whether or not this is a criminal threat is how Ethan ends up responding. And we won't go through them all, but Ethan doesn't manifest fear in his responses. There aren't going to be any conventions you need to wake up. Uh, Mike, do you have a family? You know, take care of your family. He's very nice. Um, his family needs him. He doesn't seem to take this as a serious threat in any, in any sort of way doesn't manifest the fear. It's going to be hard for him to then later say, uh, actually, I sat in fear. Well, did you call the police? Well, no. What I did was I talked to him politely on Facebook back or on Twitter or whatever, back and forth. It looks like Facebook. I talked to him politely on Facebook back and forth. Uh, and they're like, well, that's not what scared people do. That's not what scared people do at all. And so, you know, it doesn't look like you are actually in fear. And that is an important element of the crime is not only would it be reasonable for him to feel fear. And I think from especially the message of I'm going to come to your house and blow your face off. Very specific, localized threat with a, you know, that could raise the level of an immediate sense of fear. They must also actually manifest that fear. The, the, the state of mind of Ethan Van Skyver must be that he is in fear. 
and he would have to testify to that later and they would be able to use the messages that he sent back to Mike to say, doesn't look like you're in fear here. Not at all. Now, maybe you could have been in fear, but you weren't. You didn't actually believe this was a threat, did you? So and such, you know, and so on and so forth. That's how you would fight it. And the lack of fear in the victim is an affirmative defense, even if all of the other elements are met. Uh, yeah, I intended it to be a threat. Yeah, I said it. Um, it could be taken as a threat reasonably, but he didn't, though. And that's fatal to the case. So the ultimate verdict on this is, no, it's not really a threat of violence that's prosecutable under the criminal law. It doesn't mean it's not necessarily uh, harassment or something else that could be that could be challenged civilly. Would it be worth it? Probably not. I'm guessing he's a broke comic book store owner who has nothing to take. That being said, uh, these are not things you should say. And Mike's actually very lucky that he said these to something, someone like Ethan who wouldn't take it as a threat or who, more importantly, I guess, didn't take it as a threat because he could have. He could have done it. And this would be potentially a felony under California law. He did threaten to murder Ethan Van Skyver with a gun. Um, that's a problem. Don't do that, guys. All of this to say, be careful in your communications online. The way they determine whether or not it is a threat goes both ways. If the other party is fragile, but it's reasonable that they could be afraid, they are afraid, suddenly your words could be a threat towards them and could be actionable. Uh, in this case, I don't think uh, you would find a prosecutor who would take this personally. But it, if Ethan had reacted differently, called the police immediately, might have a different story. Hope you guys found this super informative, fun, a little lighthearted murder threats <laughs> for, the, for the week. Uh, if you did, like and subscribe, all of that stuff. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about it. Have we gone way too far into the uh, tough guy act online. Is that something that we need to change? Does the law need to work around that? What do we need to do? Uh, hopefully you like this. We'll see you soon. Have a good day. Peace. Peace.